In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a room scale controller using the Oculus Rift and Unity. So I'm able to move around here with my analog stick, just like an Xbox or PlayStation controller. I'm actually sitting down right now, so I'm not moving around. Uh, and then I have hand tracking cubes, so you can move around, rotate those. And if I want to stand up, it's a room scale controller, so I can also move in real world space. And just like that, hopefully I don't run into a wall here. Yeah, I can move over there, and I can also move with the controller at the same time, so you can do both. And that kind of lets you go wherever you want in the world, so you can still have your room scale, but you can also kind of make a bigger world than just a small little area. Um, I would recommend some kind of ghost area or cube just to show where your room scale area is in the game. Um, but that's good for that. So the first thing I wanted to go over here is the scale. Um, basically what you're trying to do is convert the real world space that you're walking in into Unity space. So that stack of cubes right there is the default Unity cube. If you just imported a Unity cube uh, with 111 scale, that's what it's going to look like. And I've stacked six of them up. So I could put my camera up there, but the problem is if I put my controllers on the ground in real world space, they're not going to be anywhere near the ground here. Um, so you want to kind of convert the two, and the way to do that is divide by three. So basically we're scaling it down to a third, uh, any object in the game. Especially if you import an object, just scale it down a third, and you'll get feet. But these cubes are a really good reference point. So that's scale one, and that stack over there, they're each scale 0.333. And that gives feet, uh, like actual real world, real world feet. So this in the world and in the game are both one foot by one foot by one foot, and it all just merges up. Now, the first problem here is that um, I've set my height. The game has a, I put in a variable that puts my height. But the problem is I was sitting down, and then I stood up. So I'm kind of at two different heights, even though the game thinks I'm still the same height. So I've created a button that'll adjust for that, and it's going to set me back there. So now I'm at the proper height. Um, even at, like if you're changing players or something and someone's a different height, you could just set that variable, uh, put their height in, and then click the button, and their head will be in the right spot in the space. So that's six, uh, six cubes that are each a foot tall. Uh, so that's six feet. If I walk up to that, you can see that it's just near my head there. So that would be six feet. I'm a little lower. And then I also brought it down for the eyes. So there's a little, um, it goes down a little bit more for your eyes. And try not to hit myself in the face there. But yeah, so that all it merges up. Okay, I think that's about it. I'm going to show you that in the uh, Unity project and just quickly go over the script here. Okay, so this is the controller in the hierarchy. Um, so it's an empty game object. This is the object that you're going to be moving with your controller. Keep in mind the camera object is what your, uh, your HMD is tracking. So that's kind of your physical, where you're moving in the real world. Then this object here is going to be taking your controller movements. Um, and since it's, the camera is parented to it, uh, it's going to add on. So the script here just has some move speeds. Uh, that's that player height. That's the one that you can adjust. Um, so if you're switching players, you just change the height and the script will automatically um, update everything for you. So we have the collider that's on the camera, the camera object. Uh, I've got a forward facing game object here. All that's doing is taking your camera's up and down rotation and getting rid of the rest. So when you're doing movements with your camera, uh, you usually want to know which way you're going forward, but you don't want to know where you're looking. So this kind of emits, like let's say you're looking up, and then you start transforming forward, you're going to start going up into space. So what this is going to do is it's going to get rid of that, it's going to get rid of your head tilt, and it's just going to move um, basically the way that your body is facing, but just that y-axis, that's all it's taking. Um, so that's what that is, you'll see that in the script. And then I create a left and right hand object. So these are empty game objects. Um, the way I like to do it is I'll create two references right here. Um, to empty game objects. So I always know that those are going to be right where my hands are. And then from there, if I want to add something into the game uh, that, that's tracked by my hand, I just parent it on. So the cubes are actually parented to that object. 
Um, and that works good for, let's say you have like a sword with a handle and it doesn't quite merge up when it comes into the game. Rather than messing with all that stuff in the script, you can just parent it onto the left hand and then just go onto the sliders here and you can just adjust it so that it, it matches up with where you want it to be. Okay. So yeah, so two empty game objects and just parent stuff to them. Is, I find that's the best way. Um, and I'll just go into the script here. I think that's pretty much everything there. So make sure you're using the engine, uh, Unity Engine XR library uh, for all the virtual reality stuff to work. But then it's a lot like a normal controller. You've just got move and sprint speeds, uh, fall speed. And then current move speed is going to be the final one that's applied uh, to the transform. And here's that player height in centimeters. So this, you could, you could stick that in your player settings somewhere, and that would be the one that people are able to change. And we have another one down here. It's going to do all the, all the calculations uh, for the script. So we'll see that in a second. These are all just the references that I showed before. I'm just made public, so you can drag and drop them. And then in awake, you just want to set XR device, um, set tracking space, room scale. The other one is stash, yeah, stationary there, uh, but we'll do room scale. That's the type of controller we're doing. And then player height. Um, so this is just a function that returns a float. It's basically going to do all the math, so you can just use it for these other functions later. Um, so I've got some info in the comments there, but basically just scaling objects down a third. Um, so here's the kind of final line here. Uh, so we take the player height. So in my case, that's 180 or thereabouts. Uh, then I'm minusing 20, that's to adjust for eye height. Um, so going down to the eyes, it's about 20 centimeters. You can measure that out if you want to be exact. Uh, then we multiply by this fraction. That's just going to convert it centimeters to feet. That's kind of a normal ratio. Uh, then divide by three um, to make it work in Unity. Um, so that'll merge it up in Unity space. So this overall player height, that is the one that you're going to use in the script now um, from that's deriving from this 180 centimeters or whatever you put it as. Okay, so here's the controller movement. And this is an every frame, um, is updating every frame. You can see down there in the update. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is get that forward facing game object to be um, in the right position and rotation. So we're just going to set it equal to a new um, a new Euler, which is just your camera Y rotation and just zeroing out the other two. So again, that's just kind of like the uh, the forward direction that you're facing is what that's going to give you. Um, and then the position, we just want the X and the Z. We don't want to know how high or low you are. Okay, so now we have the sprinting. Uh, that's just using that kind of left uh, that left trigger. Um, axis. You can use whichever one you want, um, and basically any one that lurps between two different values. So this button goes from 0 to 1, so based on how hard you're um, pushing it in, it's going to move you forward faster. And you could also do that for sprinting, so you could have like a sprint speed um, and multiply it by an axis, and you'd move from very slow to just a little bit less slow. Okay, so yeah, that's just multiplying by the sprint speed, um, by that ratio. And if it's not pulled down at all, or not by that buffer, uh, it's just going to do default move speed. And again, move speed is just something you set up here. So you can find a value that you like. Same with sprint and fall speed. Okay, back down here. Uh, so now we're trying to get to this transform translate. Um, just like a normal controller, you're trying to get a move direction vector to move the controller. So how we're going to do that is we're going to use this face forward facing object and we want its local forward direction. We're going to multiply that by the left stick, um, ver left stick vertical, so forward or back, and then multiply that by current move speed. And then the second thing we want is we're going to take forward facing right, multiply that by horizontal. Um, so this is the left and right on your analog stick. So just up, down, left, right on the analog stick is what these two are doing. And that's going to be your controller movement. And then I've added gravity as well, just a raycast here. Uh, going down from the camera's position, you get the hit distance there. If the distance is greater than the player's height, 
and then you're just going to add a negative value, which is your fall speed that you can change. Um, so if you make this higher, you're going to fall faster, um, and that'll bring you down. And then you get that final um, transform, and that'll move your controller. Okay, so now I'm going to go to hand tracking. Uh, for this one, we are taking that left hand and right hand object, and we're just applying the right transforms. So we're going to get the overall controller, um, overall controller's position, and then we're going to get the local position of your controller, and we're going to add the two together so that the controller is showing up in the right spot in the virtual world. And then we're just applying the rotation as well, which is just get local rotation um, of the right XR node. So again, an XR node is just, just a piece of hardware, uh, so it just depends what you're tracking. Yeah. What the left hand. Okay, so that's it for hand tracking. Now this is that recenter function. Um, you can set that to any button really. I've just set it to the uh, pressing the left analog in. So what that's going to do is it's going to set you in the virtual world at the height that you specify. Um, so if your camera is on the ground or your HMD is on the ground when you start, and then you pick it up, it might not be in the right spot. So any time that things aren't merging up, you just press this button. Also, if you're switching players or something. So it's going to do it manually. Uh, gravity won't work for this. So the first thing you want is a float camera to ground. That's just taking the camera position and the controller position. These usually aren't going to be merged up. One will be up here, one will be there or something. So it's going to add those two heights. It's going to see how high off the ground you are, and it's going to bring you down. So yeah, you just get an offset by doing that calculation, and then you do the transform with the offset. Um, so that'll just reset you to your height that you specified. Okay, so put those in update, uh, and you should be good to go for that. Um, that's about it. Just keep in mind, you've got a, a main controller here with everything parented to it, a script on it that you're moving with your controls, and the camera is able to walk around, get up and walk around in real world space. Um, to add on to the other controller movement. That's about it. Thanks for watching.